Breath Meditation In addition to the loving-friendliness meditations we have just explored, there is another kind of meditation of inestimable value to building the foundation of jhana practice, breath meditation. How to do breath meditation is a large topic. It has been thoroughly covered in the first book in this series, Mindfulness in Plain English. If you are uncertain of the technique, please see that book or any other well-respected primer on the subject. The recommendations for further reading in this volume offer suggestions. But for our purposes now, I will offer just a brief recap. This section just lays out some simple pointers on applying breath meditation toward the goal of achieving deep concentration. First, fasten the mind on the breath and hold it there. You may start with the rise and fall of the abdomen and the chest, but then you should switch over to the breath at the nostrils or the upper lip. This is where you will get a single, distinct point of sensation. Stay with that single point of sensation. When other thoughts, feelings, or perceptions pull you away, notice them just enough to see their impermanence, their fleetingness. They rise, stay a bit, and then fade away. Just see that, over and over. In this way, every distraction from your object of focus acts as a stepping stone towards your process of liberation. Seeing the impermanence in every distraction just that, all by itself, may be enough to lead you into genuine concentration. If distractions refuse to go away or keep coming back, analyze which hindrance is present, then apply one or more of the remedies presented in the next chapter. Also bear in mind that sometimes your mind is like a cup of muddy water. How can you get clear water from a cup of muddy water? All you have to do is set the cup on flat ground. Then the sediment settles down and the clear water stays on top. Similarly, when the mental sediment has settled down, your mind becomes clear. Then you should be able to sit, ideally, for one solid hour. Even if you have aches and pains, you should not move, though don't sit in a position that needlessly causes you excruciating pain. Let the physical sensations move into the background. When you want to gain concentration, don't go into the details of the breath, rising, falling, and so forth. If you happen to notice the rising and falling of breath, the movement of the abdomen, and so forth, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and notice them until your mind settles down. Do not investigate or elaborate. Stay with the overall feeling of breath as a single flowing process. Don't think, or categorize, or conceptualize. Then the mind switches over to pure concentration, all by itself. Vipassana Awareness of the Breath Sometimes when you begin to meditate, your mind is restless. It's very hard to center on the breath and stay there. You need something interesting to hold your attention. But what could possibly be interesting about the breath? You've had it all your life and you take it for granted. Isn't breath the most boring thing in the world? There is something going on. In fact, there are, by traditional reckoning, 21 things going on, over and over. They are things you can notice, things you can make the subject of your vipassana awareness. You can notice each of them as a separate event, if that helps you keep your attention on the meditation object. 21 points of repetition occur with every inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling has a beginning, a middle, an end, a brief pause. Exhaling has the same four events, that is eight points. We can also identify the following four points. Pressure, when the lungs are full with inhaled breath, we experience pressure. Release, there is a release of pressure when we breathe out. Anxiety or urgency, when you breathe out and the lungs are empty of breath. There is a small degree of anxiety or urgency. Relief of anxiety or urgency, when you breathe in. The anxiety fades away, and you experience relief. The four elements are there, too. Earth element. The breath touches your nostrils, the tip of your nose or the upper lip, and inside the nose between the eyes. This touch is sometimes hard and sometimes soft. That is an expression of the earth element. Water element. Sometimes breath is dry and sometimes moist. This is due to the presence of the water element in the air we breathe in and out. Heat element. Sometimes breath is warm and sometimes cool. 
air element. The air itself is, of course, present in the breath. You can also observe the five aggregates, the traditional constituents of your body and mind. The five aggregates are form, feeling, perceptions, volitional formations, and consciousness. Aggregate of form. Breath has a kind of shape to it. Because of the presence of the four elements in the breath, the ancient texts refer to breath as a body, the body of breath. Aggregate of feeling. We must feel the breath to notice that it is there for us to use as object of meditation. Aggregate of perception. We must mentally perceive the breath in order to identify its presence. This cognitive function belongs to the perception aggregate. Aggregate of volitional formation. We intentionally pay attention to our breath, feeling and perception. Aggregate of consciousness. And last but not least, we cannot do any of them without consciousness. These twenty-one points are always repeatedly present, and mindful breath meditation can bring them all into awareness. Notice especially the points about anxiety or urgency. It's coming and it's going. Anxiety motivates much of our behavior, especially the parts we would be better off without. There is much to be learned here about the function of your own emotional life. Full-blown anxiety often manifests as constant recurring thoughts about your situation, some sensation in the area of the heart, lungs, and stomach, plus an almost undetectable flavor in the mind. Here is your chance to study how small anxiety manifests for you so that later, when anxiety is strong, you will be able to study it further. This is an excellent practical application of your vipassana skills. The Four Elements The Four Elements is an analytical system to help you develop mindfulness. It works very well with the practice of mindfulness of breathing meditation. This is an ancient categorization scheme for looking at the nature of your own experience. It analyzes every experience we have in terms of symbolic qualities that are like some of the primary things we see in the normal world. Earth, water, air, and fire. Please keep in mind that these are not mere words, nor are they some highly philosophical or mystical qualities only available to deep thinkers and spiritual supermen. These are things you are experiencing right now. It is just a different way of analyzing the experience you are having at this very moment. Each of the four elements manifests in the single practice of mindfulness of breathing. The earth element represents the property of solidity, heaviness, solidness, compactness. Its characteristics are hardness or softness. Just feel yourself sitting. Place your attention on that solid feeling where your body touches whatever you are sitting on. Feel your feet pressing against the floor. Those are hard sensations. Feel the light touch of the air against your skin. That is a soft sensation. This is the earth element. The breath itself shows you the earth element. The breathing can be hard or soft. You would not feel anything unless there were solid flesh doing the feeling and you can feel that solidity. You feel whatever part of the body the air contacts as hard. You feel the solidness of the abdomen as it rises and falls. You feel the solidity of the nostrils as the air passes over them. Sometimes the breath has a roughness to it. Sometimes a gentle breath is so soft you can scarcely feel it. It's a very simple concept, really. It's so simple that we totally overlook it unless somebody points it out to us. Mindfulness of breathing shows us the hard, soft, and solid qualities of our experience. The water element has a moist or flowing quality. The blood pumps through your veins. Your stomach pulses and gurgles with digestion. There are various squishing and swishing feelings happening within you right now, and most of the time you ignore them. When you get quiet in meditation, they stand revealed. Any sensation that is damp, humid, or clammy in nature is in this category too. Breath has a flowing quality. Sometimes you feel the moisture as humid air comes in. When the external air is dry, you can feel that it is more moist as it goes out. As you concentrate on the breath, other sensations from the rest of the body intrude. Some of them have this flowing quality too. Mindfulness of breathing shows us the liquid, moist, and flowing qualities of our experience. The air element is experienced primarily as motion or stillness. The moving quality of anything is the air element expressed through that thing. 
you experience little tinglings and vibrations in the skin. It feels like something is moving. There may be deep grinding feelings inside that have a moving quality. The flow of blood, the same sensation that revealed the liquid factor, can also show you the air element if you open up to it as pure movement. The air element can also be experienced as space, the space within which movement of breathing takes place. Sometimes the body feels like an empty house, a vacant space, a mere shell within which all kinds of things are taking place. Maybe nothing is taking place. You still have the element of air present as the feeling of an empty locality within which there is absence or stillness. The breath is constantly moving. The abdomen fills. It rises and falls. The physical air moves in and out. Even in the pauses, there is a feeling of hollowness or vacuum within which it all happens. Mindfulness of breathing shows us the moving, still, or spacious quality of our experience. The fire element manifests as heat or cold, or any sense of temperature in between. It also manifests as the dry sensation that goes with heat, when you feel hot and want to be cooler. The pure feeling that precedes the thought is the fire element manifesting. The temperature feels neutral, and you have to really seek to feel any temperature at all. That is the fire element, too. Any sensation within the body that has an energetic or burning or chilling quality is the fire element at work. There are feelings that go zing and zoom. They vibrate very fast. There are burnings and acidic stingings. The air often feels cool against the nostrils on the in-breath, warmer on the out-breath. That is the fire element. You become distracted by the temperature around you. You feel the temperature of the physical air against your skin. That is fire manifesting. Mindfulness of breathing shows us the hot-cold or energetic quality of our experience. So, what is the point of this four elements category scheme? We contemplate the four elements of the breath body as a meditation exercise to examine our own experience with precision. With every passing material experience that we see in meditation, we silently ask, which of the four qualities predominates here? The whole purpose is to push us, almost against our will, into contact with the pure, experiential essence of sensory reality. Training the mind to see the impingements of material experience as simply elemental vibrations helps to break down our usual mental habits. It frees us from the concepts that usually arise and the mental reactions to those concepts. And like all other vipassana meditation, when the intense examination carries you into the wordless, non-conceptual observation of what is happening, you drop the words, drop the labels, and just sit in the midst of change. Developing a Daily Meditation Practice The most effective daily regimen I have found is to combine the two primary practices presented here. You use metta meditation to prepare the mind for jhana, and then use either the breath or the pure feeling of metta to carry you into the jhana state. The advantage of using the breath is that it is a habit that most of us have developed and cultivated throughout our meditation career. It is something we already have. For most of us, when the mind is quiet, it swings naturally to the breath. We have trained it to do that. The advantage of metta is the similarity between the pure feeling of metta with its calm and joy and the feelings that predominate in the jhana state. Which you choose is a matter partly of your own personality. You use the one that works best for you. But remember to start with metta and, if you are still going to switch to the breath, let metta make the mind still. Quite often the mind swings to the breath naturally out of habit. The switch should be gentle, if possible, occurring by itself. You might begin with a formal recitation of your intentions. You want to really feel it in a personal way. It is often very effective when expressed in your own thoughts, your own private internal language, the way you normally talk to yourself inside your head. I often use something like this. Let me clear my mind of all resentment, anger and hatred. Let me banish all want and need and agitation. Let my mind be bright and awake and aware. Let it be filled with friendly feeling. Let the clear mind experience clear Dhamma. Let my mind be filled with compassion. Let me have metta so that I can feel other people's suffering and my own joy. Let me have strength to practice without difficulties. 
let me find peace and joy and give them to everyone. I want to keep my mind alert throughout this session. I want to attain concentration. I honestly want to understand the Dhamma so that I can share my understanding of Dhamma with everybody. I don't have any ulterior motive. I do it for myself and everybody else. We all benefit. I want my mind to be clear. I want everyone's mind to be clear. I want to find peace and joy for myself and everyone everywhere. I am doing this for myself and everybody. I am clearing my mind to taste the peace and joy that lies down at the roots of my mind, down under the thoughts. I want peace and joy for myself and everyone. I want to see impermanence happening before the eye of wisdom so that I can be free and help everybody else become free too. You may use any words you like to generate the friendly, peaceful thoughts in your mind. Make it real. The formal recitations are a good place to start, but your own thoughts often work better. Remember your goal, to see the impermanence in all experience. Keep mindfulness bright and clear. Spot every hindrance that arises. Know which hindrance it is and see it when it is present. Use the tools presented in the next chapter to overcome each one. Watch it. Know when it is present and when it is no longer there. See its impermanence. When the mind becomes quiet and still and joyous, let the attention glide to the breath or ride the pure feelings of peace and contentment and goodwill into jahana. Stay with your object of attention. Rest the mind on it. Watch it. Watch for the sign to arise. We will have more to say later about what exactly this means. Watch yourself watching for it, and notice your own desire or any other reaction. Stay with the object. No peace. Remember, jahana happens when it happens. It cannot be forced or rushed. Every apparent failure is a step toward success. When it doesn't happen as you want it to, use mindfulness to notice the feelings of frustration that arise. Every time you do that, you are strengthening your mindfulness and moving one step closer to the goal. You cannot lose unless you give up.